Hi everyone, it is Debbie, your friendly neighborhood naturalist, and today we're going to be talking about ducks, specifically dabblers, specifically this guy. Who is this guy? You know, it's a male, and probably the most common duck you're going to see anywhere. Any guesses? This is a male mallard. The female is all brown with darker brown spots, but you can obviously spot him mostly from yellow bill, green head, orange legs, brown on the breast area, and kind of this you know grayish and blackish. Also, um, when the wing comes out, there's a blue strip, like a metallic blue strip when the wing comes out. That's also a good indicator. And also, look at that, that white uh, neck band. So, there's a couple things I want to show you about this. This is a duck skull. Again, remember, all of my skulls that I have are fake. This is a duck skull. Got that long bill. You can see, you can actually look at it this way. You can really tell it's a duck skull, huh? And one really cool thing about duck skull, ducks that are unique, this particular kind of duck, is that they have little tiny, tiny teeth. I know it's really hard to see. They have little tiny, tiny, tiny teeth all the way around. And you can kind of maybe see that on the bottom there. And so what they're going to do is they're going to swim in the water and they're going to kind of go under and they're going to grab up um, plants and bugs, but also a bunch of water with it, right? Because it's underwater. And then when they come up, they're going to squirt the water out, kind of like a strainer. And what's left is the food. So kind of like this. Right, a strainer that I use to clean off my berries and maybe a small amount of pasta. Okay, so it acts like the same kind of thing. They scoop up a bunch of water and bugs and plants, and then they squirt out, strain out that water. Um, and they are called dabblers. They're the type of duck that's a dabbler. What does the dabbler mean? Well, it means, sorry, it's kind of a big book here, maybe you can see, it means bottoms up, right? So mostly what they do is they're gonna stick their bottoms up in the air and they're gonna take that beak and they're gonna reach down the bottom of the pond, creek, whatever it is, and pull up those plants with, you know, or try to get bugs and they're gonna have um, all the stuff in their mouth and then they're gonna pop back up and then strain it out like we talked about. So a dabbler is somebody who kind of dabbles at the bottom with their beak. I like to call it bottoms up, as you can see. So that's a very common thing. If you're wondering, like, why is the ducks always, like, showing their bottoms like that? That's why, right? Because they're going, getting that food and pulling it up. So one thing about ducks and other water birds is they are in the water pretty much the whole time, right? Now, can they go to the, the store and get, a, like, a waterproof um, raincoat? No, they can't, right? So there's a couple ways that they keep their, their bodies dry. Any of their feathers dry. For one, now this is not a um, duck feather, but I can still show you. Feathers are made up of these little tiny uh, individual little feathers here. And if I pull it apart, you can actually see that there's a whole bunch of them together. And they're put together by barbs. I can pull it apart. So basically, it's like these little tiny hooks. They're so, you can't see them, they're so tiny. Little hooks that are hooking onto each other. So if I kind of bring them back together again, now those barbs are hooked. I can kind of pull that feather apart a little bit. You can see them hooked. And then I can pull it apart. So ducks, they have really tight, tight barbs on their feathers that connect it's these individual ones. And it's so tight that it actually keeps, helps to keep the water in from getting to their bodies. So as the water is kind of coming onto them, they go down or just getting water on them, that uh, feathers, those feathers are gonna help protect water getting in, kind of like a raincoat, right? And also the duck wing here is, I can't really see it, but it's tucked into its body which is going to help it to kind of, again, seal up that area so no water can get in. So that's one way they kind of have a waterproof raincoat. The other way is that they have in the back area up here, they have um, oil. 
and so it's called preening oil. So what they'll do is they'll take their beak and they'll kind of, obviously I can't do it, they'll reach around with their beak and they'll get some of that oil on their beak and then they will preen, show you, they will, you know, take it and put the oil on their feathers. And that helps the water to kind of run or bead off with that oil. So they have built in raincoats, which is pretty cool. Now the other thing is that when they are swimming around, what's the one thing that they have on their body that is going to help them swim in the water really easily and fast? Does anybody know what they have on their bodies? Again, I'll bring my book out here. They have webbed feet. Okay, so they'll have their, their toes and they'll have the webbing. Just like maybe when you go swimming or when you go snorkeling and you put flippers on your feet to help you swim faster and better, these ducks have webbed feet to help them swim in the water as well. And other animals have them too. Um, beavers have them as well. Uh, a lot of animals that are in the water are going to help them to move along. And uh, today we went for a walk at our local wetland, like a block from my house, and guess what we saw? We saw baby mallard ducks. And this is the first time we've seen them this year. They were super, super tiny. I think that my son counted about maybe eight of them. And super tiny. And of course, super cute, right? So what she does is she makes a nest on the ground and she'll have um, two or three of they call broods or batches of uh, ducklings throughout the spring and the summer. So it's kind of exciting. So if you live anywhere near a pond, maybe a creek or some kind of wetland and you can safely get there right now, I encourage you to go out and see if there's baby ducks around. Also baby geese are going to start being around soon. So that'll be really fun to see. And I think that's it for now. Uh, hopefully my next video will be about my mason bees that I have because they are really starting to lay eggs and get a lot of pollen. It's really cool. And I will see you next time.